الله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله أرسله الله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون أما بعد فأوصيكم إخوتي وأخواتي ونفسي أولا بتقوى الله وطاعته كما قال الله عز وجل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون ثم أما بعد The last two weeks we've been talking about the illnesses of the heart comparing the physical illnesses to the spiritual illnesses. Last week we talked about some of the cures for some of these illnesses. Today we need to talk about prevention because we hear and we know prevention is better than, a, than the cure. You rather keep yourself away from an illness or a disease than get the disease and then try to go through the cure process which is much more difficult, much more uh, burdensome and much more, you know, um, spiritually draining. So how can you prevent some of the illnesses of the heart? And we talked about the two main straits of the illnesses, one being shahawat and one being shubuhat, the desires and the doubts. As for doubts, the Prophet ﷺ in a hadith says that a person will ponder and wonder and reflect and we'll say, ah, how beautiful the tree is. Who created it? Indeed, Allah did. And how beautiful the stars are. Who created it? Indeed, Allah did. And how beautiful the mountains. And he will go through different of Allah's creation and say, indeed, Allah did. And then a thought might come to them. Who created Allah? And the Prophet says, at that point, say, A'udhu Billah min ash shaitan rajim and don't follow that thought. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was not created. Al-Ahad al-Samad, the one who always existed. And so going into how did he always exist? Well, he's a creator, he's not a creation. We can only see creation and we cannot figure out a creator. A creator has different um, qualities and we can go through proving in, in many different ways why God had to always exist and never be created. But to go too much into that and to always think about that, the Prophet said, say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem. So think about all the attacks out there, all the comments out there, all the different philosophies out there about different aspects of God and about different beliefs and what have you. Should we purposefully put ourselves in the situation to read on that stuff and to watch that stuff and to be around people who have all these doubts? No, don't put yourself in that situation. Don't be around people who have doubts unless you are equipped to respond to their doubts. Don't go reading stuff randomly on the internet or order any books on these topics that just confuse you and don't provide you any solutions. You're at a state where you need to get solutions, answers. Don't go confuse yourself more and then try to find a, a, a cure. No, stay away from that stuff. And I've had so many people come and tell me, oh, I came across this website and I came across this book and I said, like, why do you read that stuff to begin with? Who asked you to read it? For what purpose are you, are you being a da'wah carrier to go and refute these things? And if you are, you would be able to. These things are refutable. And when I sit down and I'm able, I can, I can answer some of these things. But even myself, I avoid that stuff. I don't need to go into that stuff. I am not a person who's gonna go refute every argument out there. Others can do that if that's their, you know, hobby or I don't want to say hobby but that's what they want to focus on in terms of da'wah it's beautiful we need people to do that but not the average Muslim doesn't need to go and refute every video 
and everything out there. Keep your heart protected from these weird ideas and thoughts and confusions, which a lot of the time are, you know, misunderstandings or some really twisted thing, which you need to untwist mentally. So don't go into that. Prevent those doubts from entering your heart in the first place. Keep yourself with knowledge that actually builds you and don't look at knowledge that will destroy you. All right, so that's when it comes to doubts and including people who have a lot of doubts, who, who keep poking and making fun, stay away. Allah says in the Quran, uh, and he has revealed to you in the book that if you see or find people who are mocking God's words or you know poking things at it, right? Then do not sit with them until they talk about something else. And it's a sin to do that. So why would you go into videos and different things that are mocking Allah or mocking things? It's actually a sin. A sin, according to this ayah, to do that, Allah says, don't. So keep yourself away from this major issue that can really affect your heart. As for desires, and again, we're just going quick little lessons and there's so much on this topic, but a few things to prevent yourself from having a diseased heart that cannot control its desires? Well, number one, staying away from sins. The more you sin, the more you want to sin. The more you sin, the more easily you'll be addicted to that sin. The more your heart will feel it. The Hadith of Prophet says, every time you sin, part of your heart becomes darkened. A spot of blackness actually enters your heart. And so imagine, the more you sin, and you're gonna, your whole heart will dis be diseased. So you stop the sins, you do whatever you can to stop the sins. You go find whatever books, find whatever um, ideas are out there to stop certain bad habits. Get more reading into uh, Quran, uh, etc. Go look at ways to uh, motivate yourself to stop the sins. All right, and again, a lot to discuss on that. But prevent yourself, don't indulge into sins. Don't say Allah's gonna forgive me later, Allah's ghafoor rahim And we'll talk about this next week inshallah. But when you go into that, well your heart, you're sinning, there's an effect on it to begin with. So it'll be harder to you know, stay away from that sin and you might easily get into a habit of it and get addicted to that sin. Next. So sins, obviously you wanna stay away. Stay away from things that lead to sins. Stay away from things that, you know, may open the doors of sin for you and, and, and doors of shahawat for you. Scholars talk about other things that are halal that we still need to control because it's about self-control. Stopping sinning, a lot of it is about self-control. You know already it's wrong but it's so hard for you to control yourself. So scholars say you need to start with things that are even halal, control those. Number one, our stomachs. And I need help in that as well. We need to control how much we eat, how often we eat, what kind of food we eat. We're in a culture, mashallah, food is readily available. There's all types of restaurants and things. And alhamdulillah, this pandemic, it's easier perhaps to control your eating. Although on the other hand, you're home and you're bored and you just want to eat. But eating and controlling your food is important to be able to control. Because when you control it, you have more you know, um, ability to control other things. And that's one of the aspects of fasting. Prophet says, whoever uh, can get married, oh young men and women, go ahead and get married. And if you can't, fast. What is the connection? Part of it is you will learn to control your desires. Because eating food is a desire. So when you learn to control that, you control other desires. Another thing that scholars talk about is reducing jokes. 
we love to joke around, but the Prophet ﷺ says that Kathratul Dahik Yumitul Qal or Kama Qal that as you know the, the excessive joking kills the heart. Now, I'm not saying not to have a sense of humor or to joke here and there, and uh, you know, it's something that you can do here and there and you like like lighten up the spirit. But everything is a joke, everything is a prank, everything is a ha ha ha, right? The khutbah is ha ha ha, the prayer is ha ha, everything is ha ha ha. It's gonna kill the heart. So be careful with excessive joking, your heart dies and the seriousness in it kind of goes away. So watch out for the jokes. Third thing mentioned is excessive socialization, especially when the socialization has nothing to do with remembering Allah. Going to a halaqa, going to a remembrance, visiting a righteous person, talking about Islamic things, that's okay, that's good. But simply sitting and uh, watching uh, Netflix and uh, watching random stuff, even if it's halal, I'm talking about halal stuff, I'm not even talking about the haram stuff. The haram stuff was the first one, the sins. I'm talking about halal stuff that is useless, that is just uh, entertainment, and entertainment and entertainment, again, kills the heart and kills the seriousness about ibadah, worship, and closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fourth and last one is doing things that make you love the dunya more. Being too much into materialism, too much into gadgets, too much into cars, too much into makeup, too much into clothing, too much into, uh, you know, um, looks, right? So these things, now your love becomes towards the dunya and your love for the akhirah and for ibadah and stuff will diminish. So your heart, your heart becomes weaker. All right? So dunya is there, it's halal, we take it as needed, but it doesn't become our goal, doesn't become what defines us, doesn't become what we are after. It's a means for us to, alhamdulillah, thank Allah, enjoy the halal of it, but uh, keep it within reason and not become a materialistic person and a person into different aspects of dunya, which again, the society with the commercialism, with everything around us, really pushes us and becomes harder that we need to stay away. A final point, inshallah, about desires and doubts is that they're linked. The more doubts you have, the easier it is gonna be for you to have issues with your desires and follow your desires. Because you're like, yeah, I don't know about this, that, and you're gonna follow your desires. And the more you are into just following your desires, the, shah, the shahawat, then you're gonna have shubuhat creep in. Like, yeah, is it really haram? Is it, why is it really haram? Maybe it's not haram, maybe it is, right? So you're gonna try to justify your sins by messing up your beliefs. And when you have messed up beliefs, you're gonna justify the sins. So they are interrelated, and we gotta be careful of both of them. May Allah help us clear our hearts, Help us to stay away from these things, especially in this blessed month of Ramadan, and help us go through to the end of Ramadan. I mean, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Muhammad wa Ali wa Sahbihi Wasallam. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wal mursaleen. Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali wa sahbihi ajma'een. اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان واجعلنا من الرواشدين وصل اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقم الصلاة